Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Alex the Comic Quarter. Thank you so much for clicking play on this video. I'm really excited about this haul today. I've got something different. It's Pulp Magazines, which I feel like is in a very similar vein to comic books. And the reason why I say that is a lot of the same publishers of the Golden Age comics that I've been buying. You've got your Nidor, Better, Standard Publications. You've got your Fiction House. You've got your Red Circle, which is an offshoot of Timely Magazines. They all had an arm or a division or department that was dedicated to pulp magazines. These are the kind of throwaway novels that came out periodically. And so just like comics, they're periodicals and they probably weren't meant to collect long-term. These things were uh, not made on the best paper. So unlike novels that you'd find in the, in the bookstore, these were made on very cheap paper and would oftentimes fall apart or whatnot. And they weren't even, um, you know, really trimmed on the edges. They, they were very jagged edges, really thrown together probably very quickly. Right now, I feel like is the prime time to be picking these things up because a lot of these you could pick up for five, six, seven dollars, uh, a really cool cover issue. And then they sometimes they go up to 15, 20, 30 dollars. And then of course you get your expense, more expensive, the over a hundred, 300 up to, you know, a thousand dollars for some of these very expensive pulps, which I haven't really dove into those really expensive ones, but I've got some really, a really great collection right now of pulps. So hopefully you guys enjoy these covers. I'll try to provide some information on these as well. Sit back and relax and enjoy this haul. The first one up is actually was partially due to a gift. So I was watching the Comic Head 84, a thousand subscriber giveaway or party or whatnot. And Tony Sanders jumped on and he had some gift cards to eBay that he was giving away. And I was lucky winner to win one of those $50 gift cards. So some of that $50 went towards these pulps. And this is a huge stack of startling stories, which is an offshoot of better publications or Nidor. It's a thrilling publication. The first one up, oh, excuse me, w wanted to talk about the artist on these ones. The artist is probably what I would consider my favorite artist in pulps right now. And his name is Earl Berge, Earl K. Berge. He's an American illustrator and artist who painted a lot of these covers for thousands of pulp magazines. And he was born in 1901 in Pennsylvania and he died in 1952. So he's you know, a relatively young guy who made an impact. I'm, I'm really curious what he would have done if he would have lived longer into the 60s and 70s because some of these you know, are, are absolutely amazing. And so the first one up, I, I get a lot of my information on mycomicshop.com and I cannot find this one on there but it's startling stories. And another thing about these is there's like every three issues, there's a new volume. So these are very, very confusing to try to find which volumes these are, but this is the fall issue from 1945. And you'll notice down here, there's the buy stamp, buy war bonds and stamps for victory. That's the same thing, the, the same advertising or stamp that they would put on the startling comics issues. And it's very similar to up there, as you can see on this wall decoration that I've got right there. So this is really cool. Earl Berge is the cover artist on this one. And as you'll notice, there's a lot of metal bikinis on these, uh, on the good girl art on these painted covers. And that was said to inspire the Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi, her slave Leia outfit. And a lot of these you'll notice, you know, they're really beat up, but I'm just happy to have these for as cheap as I was able to get them. It's a pretty good deal. So this is fall issue of 1945. Next one up is the winter 1945 issue of Startling Comics. Once again, an Earl Berge and just features a really cool um, robots being put into some kind of incinerator. The Iron Men being put into an incinerator and that is pretty neat stuff there. Huge chunk missing out of the top there. This could be my favorite cover in the bunch, but this is the volume 12, issue number one from April of 1945. So this is the spring issue of 1945. Once again, you've got the buy stamps and war bonds. You've got this really cool Earl Berge robot fighting a dragon, and you've got the good girl there on the cover. His signature is right there, right next to that armband, and just a great Earl Berge painted cover. A lot of these, you know, they're said to have pretty cool sci-fi stories. I have not read any of these. Uh, really, really delicate. If there was a way to read these online, I'd definitely do that. This is the summer issue from 1945. Once again, not much to say here. There's some kind of like um, space storm or space fire tornado. Got the pretty cool, what looks to be, you know, uh, a Schomburg 
type ship there. And Alex Schomburg actually did do, you know, years before this, he did some work on startling stories. Another really cool one, and actually you can find like a 2.0 of this for $20. Got Startling Stories Winter Issue from 1946. This is January of 1946. You've got Outlaw World. Got a really cool um, guy and girl flying through space, and it looks like they're pro uh, propelling themselves using these um, wands, you know, propeller wands, I'm not sure. And then you've got the cool spacecraft in the back. So pretty cool, pretty cool book there. This is volume 13, number two. This is March 1946. This is once again a Bergy cover. They're fighting off some sort of, you know, this girl's pretty, pretty scared. He's got some sort of torch or club and they're fighting off these kind of demon uh, cave dwelling monsters. They're pretty cool. It looks like they're in the Valley of the Flame, so there's like fire and, and whatnot behind them, so that's pretty cool. Relatively clean copy of this spring issue, April 1946, an Earl Berge cover. I like the spaceman there, and some sort of dimensional um, rift is going on here, and so you're able to see maybe two dimensions coming into contact with each other. Of course, I'm immediately drawn to this one because it looks like Terra the Space Pirate. This is an Earl Berge from July of 1946. So this is the summer issue of 1946. And that guy is very similar to what you'll see on a lot of these covers. I don't know if he has a name or if he's a, a continuing character, but this character looks like a redheaded Terra the Space Pirate of some sort, so pretty cool. Um, and he's he's she's got a laser gun and, and the tree looks like it's wrapping around her. And then he's reaching for that sword down there. So it's really neat. 1946, which I guess that would predate Terra the Space Pirate because she was introduced in 47 or 48, I believe. Now you have Startling Stories from October of 1946. Once again, an Earl K. Berge cover. It always reminds me of a piano, but these are spikes, some kind of spikes or or something that's going on there. This is the fall issue of 1946. And this is January of 1947. Got, once again, that character there in the red, the dark-headed guy in the red. You've got these ships in the background, which look to be firing upon something. Got a planet there, and this girl in the green looks to be falling out or have been shoved out of that space, you know, that port there. Now uh, this is a Bergy cover as well. Now this is a Randolph Bilarski cover. And this is from March of 1947. I'm not 100% sure why Earl Berge is not on this, but this is a really neat one. And you think like that may be like a telephone pole or something, but it looks to be some sort of weapon with several coils. And it almost looks like a slingshot. So that's really neat. So you've got this guy, he's got a torn shirt. You've got this girl in distress, torn dress there as well. Really cool. And you've got some spacecraft flying in the background. So that's a pretty neat cover. I'm not quite sure what's going on in the background, but it just looks like they're almost in like a foxhole type thing, fighting using these coils to shoot down those aircraft from uh, March of 1947. And this would probably be one of my favorite covers if not for this tape that they put around the border to, to protect the book, probably from chipping or whatnot. And then I had to re I tried to remove a sticker here which labeled it, and you'll see on the next issue uh, one of those stickers as well. So I'd like to get a clean copy of this book, but this is um, Startling Stories from May of 1947, and then once again, this is an Earl Berge cover. Uh, there's some folds here, some really deep creases, and um, these books are thick too, so if you look at those thick books, uh, they've got some really great covers, so if you stack them up on each other, they look pretty cool. 15 cent from 1947. Okay, so here's an example of what they had, uh, those stickers. It's almost like a name badge of some sort, and they used it to label Startling Stories, July of 1947. Once again, an Earl Berge cover. What's neat about this one is it looks like they opened up some sort of portal, some sort of di dimensional portal, and um, she looks to be uh, being sucked in or grabbed by this creature, this demon or this other dimensional uh, creature. So it's pretty cool. That is from July of 1947, Earl Berge cover. Here is Startling Stories from September of 1947. It's an Earl Berge cover. Lord of the Storm, really neat character. Um, once again there you can see Earl Berge's signature. Try to get a close-up of that. And you've just got this really cool godlike Lord of the Storm 
striking down, um, you know, Typhoon and striking down these lightning bolts on that city there. So really neat from September of 1947. And the last one that I have in this collection that I bought online is the Startling Stories. And I got these all in one lot and they came in just one like priority mailer, which was pretty cool. It was fun to unbox those. So this is Startling Stories from November of 1947. It's still a 15 center. And this is an Earl K. Berge, some sort of like tornado or whirlpool, purple cloud Earl Berge's, definitely one of my favorites. It's nice to have a favorite in, in the pulp genre because there's so many pulps that I can focus in on this particular artist right there. Find some really, really cool covers of the sci-fi genre that I like. So I'm gonna cut it right there and I'm gonna come back with a part two for this video just so that I don't overload but the next installment of this will be all uh, from the same collection. There is an older gentleman that I've been buying comic books from and he sold me pulp magazines. And this is actually how I found him. I was searching on eBay for pulp magazines around my area and I found this guy and through him, I was able to ask if he had any comic books and I was able to find a ton of Western and Silver Age comic books. He's still got a ton of comic books left, which hopefully at some point I'll be going back and getting those. But thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know what you think down below about these pulp magazines. Do you collect pulps? Are these interesting enough to you that if you're a cover collector, especially of the golden age, would you look into buying pulp magazines? What was your favorite of these ones that I showed? And with that being said, I will talk to you all on the next one. See ya, bye.